how would you as me or what, what tips would you give to me uh, if I want to get into uh, being an entrepreneur in a technical field who should I talk to what should I what book should I go read I mean even any sort of any sort of uh, mm. advice in how I should change my change my daily routines or whatever how should I approach this I mean, I think what's happening now, and Zapier was really in the middle of this, which is this space of, of uh, no code. You know, there's i uh, I'm definitely using this too much. I have to stop doing it. <laughs> I'm not going to pick up on it anymore. No worries. I'm not going <laughs> to. The, uh, the area of no code has become a thing. It's become really uh, powerful. And it's something that it's funny. My original product that became Google Sheets, um, the one that our startup did before we got bought by Google was was a no-code product. It, it turned a spreadsheet into a web app. So you as a non-technical person, if you could build it in a spreadsheet, you could launch it as a web app. And it was super powerful, but very niche. And it was, um, and it was super early. This is like 2003. And so I think a non-technical person should try to find tools that help them build technical things or as close as possible to technical things. And I'll include things like Photoshop in there, you know, and things that at least you can express your idea really clearly in a, you know, in a digital way. That's, I guess that's the key is to be able to show someone. And it, it, it's something that I, I find it's uh, really a prevalent issue, which is there are so many great founders to be founder people that could be founders that are non-technical that don't know how to deliver something that is on a technical platform and they need you know technical co-founders basically um, but before they do that i think they can find tools that help them implement things that seem technical uh, that didn't require a lot of technical skill so there's um you know there are tools like it, so if you can do it in a spreadsheet because that's somewhat technical but not that technical um, you can use something like Glide to turn it into an app. You know, Glide is a really cool, uh, you know, way to turn a spreadsheet into an app. Or you can use, uh, there's a product called Bubble, which, you know, lets you build something as an online app. And it's a little technical, but it's it's leaning on the no-code um, area. And then, um, you know, there's there's plenty of things that kind of guide you to the point where, you're expressing your idea enough to know if it's a great idea. So people can look at it and say, Oh my God, I want that. And then you can say, Ooh, it's not quite ready, you know, but at least I know people really, really want it. And second to attract the technical co-founder. Um, and then, you know, then my advice is be ready to give up half your stock just make sure you do that, you know, get, bring somebody on that has a real, a real stake, uh, in, in the success. Definitely. And don't you also think, quite honestly, uh, at least this is what I sometimes think, that I'm a bit full of crap when I say I'm a non-technical person. What does that even mean, really? Like, there's no there's no sort of predetermined category yeah. of, of uh, there's there's you can I mean, you might not become uh, an MIT PhD in computer science, but that's not a prerequisite. You can always pick up a new skill if you put your mind into it in some way. That's right. Yeah, and it's yeah, kind that's of a, definitely of, right appendix to Isaac's question uh, I think you know I was about to get to that that you know basically most people could probably learn to do it but what is the extent to which people should learn to code and not maybe now all people but you know founders uh, or people who want to be involved with technical uh, product driven companies should the should basically every founder know at least some code because what what you often hear is that you know the clash between business people and technical people because the business people don't understand anything and then you know this eternal battle and it would all be solved by the business people just learning how to code a little bit and you know the same is true probably in reverse but what what do you think uh, about about this argument in in general so i have a i think a different view depending on I'll call it stage of career or or motivation and desire. There's incredible value to learning, period, like full stop. Learning technical skills is, uh, is one of those things that's incredibly valuable. And mostly because there's so much opportunity in using technology to solve problems. Like that's just, so if you love solving problems, and you're willing or curious to learn technology and you want to learn new skills and you're at a point in your career where, hey, who knows? I just don't know. Maybe I'll love it. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll get into it. Um, 
then absolutely it's worthwhile. And then second is to understand, learn it enough just so you understand it so you can talk to a technical person with some meaningful, you know, um, material. You know, you, you, could, you could understand what they're saying and they can understand what you're trying to express. So somebody recently just asked me, you know, and I, and I do advisory sessions a lot. And somebody said, hey, I don't know enough technology. I need technical help. I don't even know. And she said, relational databases. And I think I need a relational database. And I'm thinking, okay, well, she's already exposed the fact, like you were saying, uh, that she's full of it. She's a little technical. She knows what a relational database is and she knows that she needs one. Then she's got just enough. And that's super valuable that she's got that because then she can uh, talk about um, what she needs and talk to someone who is technical and they can say, oh yeah, I can do that for you. And it is relational database uh, tech that you need. But I don't think every, like just to go right at the answer, no, every founder should not learn to code. I, I think what they should do is, is find the complementary skills they need to, to create that company, create that product, take, take advantage of this opportunity they see. Um, but they don't personally need to do it. That's like immediately, I feel the wrong assumption, which is people do things themselves. That's just not right. And if you want to try to do something yourself, go right ahead. And it's awesome. I do something myself. I have a, like, you know, little side hustles that I love doing myself because it's more of a hobby, you know, but it's not, that's not the way to build a business. The way to build a business is to build a team. And, and that starts with finding a, a, either a technical co-founder or technical people that are as passionate as you are. Um, but, uh, but technical skills are hugely valuable.